Hello, and thank you for attending Associated University's video seminar on lift truck replacement strategies. My name is Carl Nunn. I'm a fleet analyst at Associate. I've spent 30 years in the forklift industry as a field technician in both retail and national OEM service manager for two companies. Our subject today is replacement strategies, and I'd like to begin with the economic point of replacement. And the definition is the determination of definitive benchmarks which indicate lift truck equipment has reached the end of its economic, not necessarily functional, lifespan. Why are replacement strategies important? Formalizing replacement strategies allow companies to minimize unexpected downtime and maximize the productivity, as well as minimize expenses with regard to equipment, labor, maintenance, energy, and insurance costs. Replacement strategies that have been used by many of our clients include some of the following. Traditional ownership versus maintenance cost analysis, and we'll show you a graph of this in a slide. Age, technological obsolescence, total hours, costs, lifetime or year to date, utilization, and weighted factor models. And where these can be insightful, they often don't give you a complete picture of necessarily what your fleet is in need of as far as replacement. Traditional ownership versus maintenance cost model utilizes the ownership cost, which is the depreciated value minus the trade-in or salvage value divided by the total lifetime hours and is represented in blue on this graph. Also on the graph is the total lifetime maintenance cost, which is a cumulative summation of all maintenance costs in the vehicle, and it too is divided by the total lifetime hours to give you a cost per hour. Where the two graphs intersect is considered the economic point of replacement. If the two graphs were summed, you would find this forms a U, and the bottom of that U would be that economic point of recovery, meaning that your cost will continue to rise if the equipment is continued to be placed in service every day. This is the point that is best to either trade the, the truck in or retire it or salvage it. Age is, and technological obsolescence is another characteristic some, that some clients use to rotate their fleet. Although it's a relatively poor metric, as lightly used equipment can be economical for much longer than heavy used trucks. And that's just common sense. If the truck is barely used, um, it can go on and on. It's like that uh, used car that you can buy in the neighborhood from the elderly woman that barely went to church in it. Everybody would like, love to get their hands on the vehicle, even though it's older, because it's in such good shape. The same is true here. Abusive environments, freezer, food processing, and foundries can accelerate the aging process by causing components to fail prematurely. Replacement can also be considered even for lightly used equipment if a parts availability problem becomes evident or there's no technical support. Productivity, safety, and durability, or ergonomic enhancements render current units obsolete. There's just some safety enhancements in our industry that make it very advantageous to rotate your fleet out sooner. So even though you might be lightly using the equipment, you're better off taking advantage of the latest technology. Lifetime hours of operation. We find a lot of clients looking at just the hours on the truck, the mileage on the car, if you will. It's typically measured on dead man hours, which is sensed by the operator being on the unit through a dead man switch on a pedal or in the seat, not by key switch hours. It's based on economic, not functional life cycles. Again, if it's a light duty environment, it might actually go much longer. But with lifetime hours, you're making a decision for economic reasons. Contingent upon operating environments and proper maintenance practices by uh, trained technicians. And this goes to the fact that if it's a harsher environment or if it hasn't been properly maintained, you might actually run into some significant costs before you reach that lifetime hour goal that you might be looking for. Major overhauls can extend the economic life at a corresponding cost. And this is the old story where you can buy a Buick in the front door for $30,000, or you can walk around to the side parts store and buy the same Buick for $45,000 and still have to put it together. Overhauling a truck should be taken into consideration the cost involved because often 
a brand new truck with its associated warranties and better technology is a more advantageous route to take. Lifetime operation hours, just to give you a sense of what we're seeing on clients' trucks in a standard operation, 10 to 12,000 hours on counterbalance trucks, 2,000 to 6,000 hours on four battery pack pallet trucks or stackers, pallet riders, four to 10,000 hours, reach trucks, 10,000 to 12,000 hours, order pickers, seven to 10,000 hours, and turret trucks, 10 to 14,000 hours. Again, this is assuming that there's no overhauls to the equipment during the life cycle, and it's all operating in a normal dry clean application following the manufacturer's maintenance guidelines. Maintenance cost per hour is often used to rotate fleets, trucks out of fleets. And the important consideration here is to understand which cost per hour you might be looking at. One is a year to date, and the other is a lifetime cost per hour. Often service providers will present you with a cost per hour that represents this year's cost divided by this year's hours. But what's pretty true to form on all equipment is as it ages, there are more repair costs, just like the cars in your family. The brand new car seldom breaks down, and the 10-year-old car, the transmission may fail. You can expect the same with lift trucks. And as the costs rise over the years, and the usage remains the same, you'll find your cost per hour rises when you look year to year. However, if you look at lifetime cost per hour, that's the cumulative cost for maintenance divided by the cumulative hours of use, you'll find that it's a much lower cost per hour. And that's the cost per hour we're going to be referring to in future slides. In this particular example, although the first year is, is identical at 47 cents if you look at the lower left-hand corner for the yearly cost per hour and the life-to-date cost per hour, if you scroll to the right for the eighth year, you'll see that the maintenance costs have risen because of the age of the vehicle. The hours of usage has remained the same. And the yearly cost per hour is now $4 an hour, whereas the life-to-day cost per hour is only $2.35. Neither is wrong to use. Just keep in mind the age of the equipment when considering cost per hour in your decision-making process. Some lifetime cost per hour targets based on proper maintenance and a normal clean application. Following the estimated life today cost per hour targets not to exceed. Uh, and here you have a, a, a list of types of trucks and what we're seeing for life today cost per hours for our clients. If you have the facilities to get your maintenance costs since your purchase of that piece of equipment, compare them to these numbers and see where you rank. And then take the necessary steps to should try to achieve these numbers because they're definitely doable. Utilization or usage generally defined as dead man hours sensed on the unit per day can be expressed as a percentage of total available work hours. The following are non-industry specific averages. Two to four hours for counterbalance trucks, one to two hours a day for pallet trucks with four batteries or the stackers. Pallet riders, two to three hours a day. Reach trucks, two to three hours a day. Order pickers, one to two hours a day. And turret trucks, two to three hours a day. Note these are single shift, eight hours uh, applications. Best practice suggestion is to increase utilization by tagging out the trucks that are not used that much and see if it doesn't compromise customer service. You always can bring them back into the mix if you're finding you're falling behind on your orders. But if you can tag them out and see no change in your operation, you've just identified trucks that are in overage in your fleet. The last uh, method that we'd like to talk to you about is the weighted factor model. And what this does is takes each of those other metrics age, total hours, maintenance costs, and utilization that have their limitations when viewed by themselves and incorporated into a weighted factor model that uses all four of them in a way that can give you a better sense of which trucks should be targeted in a complete fleet rotation strategy. This is a report using that model. And as you can see, just beneath the yellow boxes is age, total hours, costs, utilization, and a weighted factor. The list was sorted by type of truck. We're looking at the reach truck family right now. And the, the list was sorted by each individual factor, one at a time, so for the age in ascending order, so that the youngest truck was at the top and the oldest truck was at the bottom. We then took the fleet and divided it into thirds, just by the number of vehicles and assigned an age factor to it of one for the newest trucks, three for the oldest trucks, and the middle third 
we gave it two. We then resorted the list by the total hours factor and again gave it a one, two, or three based on where the trucks fell within the hours on the truck. Obviously, the lower hours on the truck, the more desirable, it got a factor of one. The ones with the most hours on them got a three. And then the middle third got the two. The cost factor, this is somewhat counterintuitive. When we uh, sorted this, we actually viewed the trucks that got the repairs as more desirable in that the expectation was that the other similar age trucks would require similar repairs. We've already invested in these, so they were more desirable, less likely to fail. So they would get the ones where the ones that had no money put into them got threes. Utilization factor, what we looked for there were the trucks that the operation was depending on. If it had high utilization, it was desirable and got one. If it had low utilization, it got three. And of course, the middle third got the twos. What happens then is each of those factors are multiplied by the weighted percentages above. In this particular case, the client chose to weight more heavily the age and total hours of the trucks at 35 and 35 each. The remaining two factors were given 15 to establish 100%. These percentages were multiplied by each one of those factors and then added together to create a weighted factor. The list was then sorted by type of truck in that weighted factor with the worst trucks coming to the top. And this is the candidate list, not necessarily your target list for rotation, but certainly the trucks that give you the most reason to consider retirement and replacement then further decisions can be made on which ones you choose to rotate from your fleet. Industry surveys have found most companies without a document replacement strategy have 10 to 20 percent more lift truck equipment than needed. The resulting cost for maintenance, financing, labor, insurance, and safety often significantly impacts their performance. The cost savings can be impressive. About Associated University, we provide you with education and information to keep your supply chain running smoothly. Associate University was designed to provide supply chain management professionals with access to information on practical solutions concerning the industry's current hot topics. With live, frequently held educational sessions hosted by supply chain law leaders, this resource creates an interactive community that enables professionals to gain access to information covering today's most relevant supply chain management challenges and technologies. In addition to these sessions, Associated University offers tools, articles, and discussions aimed at providing you with a vast library of resources to utilize. To learn more about Associated University and Associated's other solutions, visit our website at www.associated-solutions.com. Thank you very much for attending, and please check out our other videos on the subject matter.